the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, and the love of his divine Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our dear brothers and sisters, we acknowledge our sins, so as to prepare ourselves worthily to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. felt devotion in these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold on to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. But unclean spirits 
crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was a great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we have arrived already at the sixth Sunday of Easter. Pentecost is only two weeks away, and so the scriptures now are going to prepare us for that beautiful celebration of Pentecost. Last Sunday, if you remember, our gospel returned us to the Last Supper, when our Lord began his farewell address, telling his apostles not to let their hearts be troubled. And he also told them that he is the way, the truth, and the life. This week, we are still at that table of the Last Supper, and the Lord is explaining that soon the disciples will not know him as they did while in the flesh. And this will be a very difficult transition, a time of great instability in their lives. Of course, they don't want to let go of what they have, much less face what he has told them is coming their way. But in the midst of all of this, he gives them a promise, a promise that he won't leave them alone as orphans. And so we need to remember that our Lord didn't promise them an easy life or a life without trials or hurts or betrayals, a life without disappointment or sadness or even rejection. Rather, his promise is that we are not alone in this world, and that he would send them the spirit of truth, the advocate, the comforter, the consoler, the sanctifier. The word that is used is packed with so, so many meaningful and precise meanings. When they need a certain aspect of that word, that spirit would be then sent to them. Our Lord knew that his death the next day would leave them questioning who they were, what this is all about these past three years, and whether they could survive without him. And knowing what was about to come, our Lord predicted that his followers would feel like they were abandoned children, whose parents had been taken away from them. And so our Lord promises that disciples would not be orphaned because he'd be with them in a new way, no longer with them, but rather now within them. He will take his dwelling within them through the power of the Spirit. And so therefore, they don't have to look too far to find him. All they would have to do is turn inwards to their hearts and souls and there he would be. And that very same promise which the Lord gave them, he gives to you, to all of us who are his children. That same Spirit of God is dwelling within us. And so when we have to face the troubles in our life, and we try over and over and over again to make things better without success, the burden of that pain can press us down and rob us of hope. Then we need to believe 
that that Spirit of God that dwells within us comes beside us and lifts us up and lifts up those burdens that we bear so that once again we can hope. Or when a friend rejects us or when somebody we love walks out of our life, that loss and rejection can paralyze us and push us to despair. It's at that moment that that Spirit of God comes to us once again that we can believe that life will begin again. When our health fails and pain and fear of illness press us down, it's at those moments that we need to trust that God again will come to us through his Spirit so we can continue on in our life. The Lord tells his disciples that the gift of the Spirit will be given to them always and forever. Always and forever. God is with us always, at every second of every day of our life. He's with us even those moments when we sin, patiently waiting for us to see the wastefulness of that sin and come back to him. God is with us when we succeed, inviting us to love even more deeply, to serve him even more completely. God is with us in our sufferings, calling us to patience and to courage. God is with us always and forever. God is closer to us sometimes than we are to ourselves. It's only when we know this truth that we are people of hope. For hope is to believe that there is something beyond our own capabilities, our own strengths, our own cleverness our own power. St. Hey, Peter reminds us in that second reading today, always be prepared to give your defense to anyone who wants an explanation of the hope that is within you. What a beautiful line of scripture. Always be ready to explain why we are people of hope. We are people of hope because of that promise that God is within us, that God is always with us. And no matter what the world throws at us, we will be victorious, not on our own designs, but rather because God is with us. God is within us, within our souls, within our hearts. His presence is with us now. Our world certainly today needs to hear our voice, our voice to the hope that it is the sure sign that now and always we are loved by God. We are his children, and he doesn't leave us orphans. He is with us, and that gives us the hope and the strength to know that no matter what happens to us, as difficult as these days may be, in the end, God is always victorious, that good will come out of this evil. And once again, we will be together, worshiping the love of God, worshiping that presence of the Spirit, that leads us to say God is our Father. And so during this Easter season, we profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so let us raise our minds and our hearts in prayer to God, the ever generous giver of love and life. For the renewal of your church on earth, that it will be ignited by the Holy Spirit, to zealously share the joy and hope offered through the death and resurrection of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our own country, that our leaders act with sound judgment, that we citizens work together in charity, caring for the vulnerable, the forgotten and lonely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all residents of nursing homes, homes for the aged and all residential homes, that God, our loving Father, will protect them and keep them safe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are sick and dying in isolation without the care of their loved ones, that they be consoled by the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, and they sense the loving presence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and all who have died, especially those who have died without family or friends around them, for their grieving families, may the light of Christ conquering over death be their support and strength. Let us remember in a special way John Gleason, Dante Alberti. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We present to God in the silence of our hearts our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, good and gracious Father, we turn to you at this moment in time to plead to you to end this pandemic, to spare our loved ones and us from this sickness, Help those who are inflicted, their families who must see them from afar, and those who help and care for them. May our blessed lady, the health of sick, St. Joseph, the protector of the church, and St. Margaret of Antioch, our patroness, intercede for us now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But it is time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they are clean. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, given you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and 
gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith.
the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I'm not even orphans. I will come to you again, alleluia, and your heart will rejoice, alleluia, alleluia. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we begin now uh, another week waiting for the day when we can all come together again to worship God as a family, we continue to pray for each other, and Father Clark and I are offering daily Masses for you and for your loved ones and your family and all our parishioners and all those who are suffering because of, of this pandemic. Thankfully, the funeral services and burials have greatly decreased. Uh, this past week, we've only had two. And I know the Archdiocese now is also working on protocols for the moment when we return to, to Mass, hopefully sooner than, than later. In the meantime, we continue to live stream as much as we can the services and Masses here at St. Margaret's. And in fact, this Wednesday at 1 o'clock, we will live stream a May crowning ceremony and benediction for our school children. So that also will be up on our website after the fact. And of course, the next day, Thursday, is Ascension Thursday. Um, we will have Mass live streamed at, uh, at 12 noon. Father Clark will be the celebrant and homilist for the feast day of the Ascension. Again, thank you for those of you who are contributing as best as you can to our parish. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. And also a wonderful generosity of all of you who have contributed to our Easter collection. Despite all the great difficulties, um, you so wonderfully gave us at least $36,000 in our Easter collection. So God bless you for your goodness and, and bringing that money to us in an extra way through the mail or dropping it off. God will certainly bless you and, and the goodness. And hopefully we'll get together soon. Know of our prayers for you and your loved ones. Have a blessed and happy Sunday to you and your family. And we'll see you all again this Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. It was almost like normal. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.